Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we are taking a hands-on review of a fitness tracker from Sum Sun. Now, fitness trackers are a dime a dozen these days, but what makes this one interesting is it's the lowest priced tracker that features ECG, and ECG stands for electrocardiograph. It's essentially using electrodes, which are contact points that touch your skin, to complete a circuit and measure the electrical activity on your skin to generate a more accurate reading of your heart rate and blood pressure than an optical sensor, which is using light, can do. Optical sensors are a lot cheaper to produce, and ECG sensors are more medically accurate. Cost aside, one reason why ECG monitors aren't as popular as optical is because it takes longer to get a reading. In fact, two minutes of sitting still to get the result. So that's not going to be the best if someone is exercising or outdoors. You have to be using the app, tap on start, and then not only does the electrodes inside have to touch your skin, your finger also needs to touch the third contact point to complete a circuit in order for it to do a reading. However, it is able to detect any uh, abnormalities or rhythm differences with your heartbeats, and that can give you very insightful data. Otherwise, the box here, quite simple. The model number is technically the H777+, Plus, and it has an OLED display, which is monochrome, and it works with both iOS and Android. Here are the companion apps that you can scan to download. Inside, we have a quick user manual printed both in Chinese and English. We have the band itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. It employs a contact point system, but there is also a clip that you need to clamp onto like so to begin charging. So I do wish they would have used magnets instead. Uh, the contact points here are on the very back of the band, but for some reason they went with this clamp design. Just looking at it, you really can't tell that it has a different sensor system on board. Wearables that had this function, instead of using the optical sensor, were often priced at $100 or $200 even for a simple tracker, not a smartwatch. So something like this for only $30 just shows the price has come down dramatically, and uh, probably a lot of factories in China or Shenzhen are producing them, hence why the cost has come down so much over the past year. The straps don't seem to be removable, but the body is made out of polycarbonate plastic and then glossy on the top, along with the third contact point, which also acts as the capacitive key for waking up the watch and cycling through the interface, and we have the OLED display, which is itself not touch sensitive. As a quick size comparison, in terms of the side, here it is next to the Amazfit BIP smartwatch. So you can see here that it's a little bit thicker as well to accommodate those extra sensors. There's a slight hump going outwards. It is pretty simple and straightforward. There are no additional watch faces that you can customize it with, but you see the time. Right now the Bluetooth is connected, the battery status, and the date down below. We can tap on it once to do a quick heart rate test. We can tap on it again to see the latest blood pressure measurement that we did through the phone, and it's uh, simply pushing that number over that we can quickly see. And we can also see number of steps we've taken today, number of hours that we've slept, uh, the distance we've walked, calories burned, and then the firmware information, and then it just loops back around. It does also feature the flick to wake motion so that the display turns on whenever you raise your hand. Turning over to the app, it's called One Band, and you can see immediately that the focus is on health in terms of the heart rate, blood pressure, stuff like that, as opposed to sports tracking. So up top, we obviously have our heart rate information, which we can see the curve through the entire day, uh, since it can be turned on to do a heart rate test every hour or so, so it is continuous. However, with this function turned on, the battery does drain pretty fast. Uh, the tracker itself needed to be recharged after five days of use in my testing. You can also take a look at the number of steps that we've walked and what times and points in the day we were most active for the past few days. So you can go and cycle back and forth to take a look at previous days as well converted to distance and calories burned. Now below here we have sleep tracking. Now sleep tracking is easily the most inaccurate part of its set of features. Sometimes it thinks you've fallen asleep if you have been in mobile for too long, so the automatic detection could be improved slightly, but it does tell you deep versus light sleep. Down below here we see our blood pressure, so the diastolic and the systolic measurements and the low and high numbers as well as what the reference kind of healthy range should be. In terms of how it functions, you can take a look at averages and histories. You can actually tap on a 
uh, history here to have a playback of the ECG in real time. Uh, so you can see it mapped out and it has 53 seconds left here on the, on the test. And we can take a look at the statistics as well in terms of how we're fluctuating. So it measures the blood pressure in addition to the heart rate. This part is done pretty accurately as long as you have a tight grip on your wrist and you are, the electrodes are contacting your skin, which uh, shouldn't be too dry. The finger should also be resting on top with the contacts of the electrodes like this. It's recommended that you don't drink any caffeine or tea, anything that really excites you before taking a test. You should be calm. And then afterwards, uh, this is, again, how you basically obtain those measurement results. Anyways, we can also tap on here to take a look at our band in terms of the battery life remaining. We can change the display mode from 12 to 24 hours. And you can also take an image and use it as a selfie remote. So you can now just tap on the... Uh, tracker here to take an image on the phone. So it could be used maybe to capture a photo with a group of people. Notifications, types of content that you want to push over, whether that's email, SMS, social media, etc. Heart rate monitoring. So again, we have it to be measuring every hour, but we can also change it to turn it off or every 30 minutes, every 10 minutes, depending on your preferences. I also have the alarm turned on. So if my heart rate is above 130 or below 50, it will trigger an alert for me to s stop and maybe seek medical attention. Now there's even more that you can do on the app. You can tap on the settings here to bring up a bar. The top is just the blood pressure, which we already saw. The ECG here, if we tap on this, this will test to see if there's any abnormalities for our heart condition. So if we tap on report, it's going to tell, tell us that there are uh, kind of common types of heart issues. And if it's shaded red, it means that there's an abnormality. So right now we are healthy, luckily. So we can tap on one like arrhythmia and it will describe the disorder and uh, what it's typically caused by. So you can uh, alert you if it's detected any of those. And again, it's pretty accurate because the ECG analysis is done using the electro contact points on the tracker. There's also HRV analysis, which is the fatigue analysis. It will give you a score where higher is typically better, broken down into things like mental stress, fatigue, heart function in general. Based on your score, it will also tell you an evaluation such as your condition are oh, decent, what you should do to improve by uh, maybe resting or exercising, so on and so forth. Next, we also have breath. So this is really teaching you breathing exercises. It will turn on the optical and the ECG sensors uh, to track if you are actually breathing along with the guide, the trainer, so to speak, on the app. And these all have different types of uh, breathing frequencies. And if you want to start a session, for instance, you can just tap on it and it will begin. So here was a sample training session. It measures how effective you were in breathing in and out when the trainer told you to do it. So your timing is actually recorded down below. It's a very neat little feature that I haven't seen with any other tracker uh, aside from Samsung. But Samsung's also doesn't track if you're doing it correctly or not, but this actually does. So really there's no emphasis on sports or different types of activities like basketball or uh, you know swimming, anything like that. It's all focused on health. So if you are someone who wants to really monitor your heart condition, the ECG, the HRV, fatigue index, things like that, that is really where the app and this particular band shines. Uh, downsides would be the fact that I think battery life is a little bit shorter than average for a fitness band. Again, with the continuous tracking turn on, it will last you for about four to five days before you need to recharge it again. Again, better for sure than the Apple Watch, but also not quite as long as something like, say, the Amazfit BIP, which will last you for almost an entire month. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And obviously, there's no sports to track on here as well. But if you want really precise, again, measurements for heart rate, blood pressure, things like that, I think this is a decent option that you can take a closer look at. And again, it really is the cheapest model that I could find that has that ECG functionality on board using the three electro contacts. So you can find out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Sumsun Fitness Tracker Smart Bracelet with ECG.